Hey, welcome in everybody. How's everyone doing out there? If you can uh, hear me and see me, if you can just let me know in the chat box, just say, uh, hey, or yes, I can hear you. What's up, CC? Yeah, get my, my stuff set up here a little bit different. <clears throat> Get the chat box up. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Good to have you. Beautiful. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me okay. So I think Elon is uh, wrapping up a call with our L1s right now. So I'm sure I'll pop in here in a second. Um, you guys check out the topic real quick. I think that's, uh, you'll find it's an important one. So we want to take a look at, you know, how do we improve our relationships with ourselves? And then uh, how do we uh, improve and parlay that really to improve our relationships with, with others? Obviously, if we are uh, not looking at the most important relationship of our lives, which is really the one we have with ourselves, it um, immediately makes every other aspect, every other thing that we look at, dig into uh, significantly harder. And so I'll kind of pose this question, but it's really open forum today. I'd love to uh, get your guys' questions in here too. And see if we can support you on um, top of the morning to you too. Uh, if we can really support you with something that's going on in your life, I'd love to hear what's going on in the community. Um, you know, my feeling has been uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but 2022 has been raw with uh, a lot of intensity for a lot of people. I know certainly since um, I would say Q4 of this year specifically from most clients that we have, most people I've talked to, uh, they've just reported just a lot, a lot of intensity over this last year. And anytime we're dealing with uh, trials, tribulations, uh, discomfort in our lives, there is absolutely a, a tendency to kind of retreat into the self to uh, experience shame or guilt or a lack of motivation. Um, and for many of us, this is the, the common way that we deal with stress. And if you're uh, tracking this conversation, just say uh, I in the chat box. I know that you are. Okay. And so today is not about necessarily answers, but certainly about getting um, curious about how we can uh, approach things that we have done throughout our lives and that have kind of replicated themselves over and over and over again. You know, could there be another strategy out there? I mean, I think most of us would say, yes, certainly there are, uh, but most of us have, have yet to apply anything different into our lives. And so we want to look at when, when this relationship with the self is not going well. I'll, I'll give you guys an example from something that happened to me this last week and um, into tomorrow. So you guys can see that, you know, regardless of the work that you've done and the awareness that you have, when you're in it, you're in it. What we want to do is we want to take opportunities when we're in it and we're having our, our patterns and strategies that we apply that we can learn so that we can not just learn from it as an opportunity and stop making it a challenge, but really use those moments as a means to, um, create a new way of being for ourselves so that when that kind of discontent arises again, we have a, a really different things in place that we have done that allow for a different experience to arise within ourselves and others, and then ultimately reshape um, that relationship to the self and relationship to others. So 
just take a moment here and just look at for yourself. You can share in the chat box. That'd be amazing if you do. Um, you know, what is the when you're when you're dealing with something, a stressful situation, you're overwhelmed, you're anxious. What are your typical strategies in that moment? If you guys want to share, like, what are your strategies in that moment? Maybe you've never even taken the time to consider that you have a strategy. It's just something that kind of happens in those moments. But what's the pattern? You know, that would be another way of looking at it. Like, what's the pattern that typically arises when you're dealing with a situation like that? What do you do? What do you say to yourself? What do you say to somebody else? You know, and again, you guys can, can share about that. And then if you have any questions about your specific pattern, feel free to ask, like, you know, you know, I noticed that this happens over and over again in my relationship with my spouse, with my mom, with my dad, with my kids, you know, like, what could I do about that? Anything like that. So <clears throat> I want to share you guys a, a, a story from, from my life this last week. Um, my wife and I just, uh, what's up, man? Yeah. Thanks, brother. Um, this, uh, this Q4 for, for me has been, um, I don't want to say stressful, but wrought with a lot of intensity, um, a lot of life changes that were happening very quickly, some were financial. Um, we have a new baby on the way. My wife is very, very pregnant right now. She's about eight and a half months pregnant. Um, and we are in this um, the school that we've been part of now for about three years. That's uh, the work that's done there is a, it's a healing school. School of Energetics. Uh, I just like to say it's a mystery school, but really what that means is it's a, a school for awareness and energy and healing. Um, and the work we do there is extremely intense. And so we were uh, we were up in Northern California, up near Nevada City, where we do some of the classwork up there. And um, I had pitched to my wife that we not go to this specific module. The modules are about five days long. And I pitched her because I, I was looking at everybody getting sick around us, um, friends, family, whatever. Maybe you guys are noticing that everyone's like coughing and sneezing and strep throat and respiratory stuff and all that kind of stuff. And certainly with her uh, her current state, I just didn't think it would be wise, you know, for, for her to potentially get sick. So I pitched a few times before. I'm like, hey, sweetheart, I'm like, you sure you want to go? I'm like, just seems like a added stress in our lives if, you know, things go sideways. And sure enough, uh, that's exactly what happened. Two days into our module, my wife got about as sick as I've ever seen her. And if um, you ever had a very pregnant wife, you know, if she's coughing a lot, it's creating a lot of, you know, tension in the belly. And so I spent two days like uh, missing the module, taking care of her, of course. And uh, like, you know, she was so weak that I was like walking her to the bathroom, you know, eight to 10 times a day and uh, that kind of stuff. And I was like, hey, look, whatever happens here, I just can't let myself get sick. So I'm trying to take care of myself. We're not sleeping. Magically make it on this airplane enough to get home. And then the flight home, uh, I start feeling a fever uh, as well. And then uh, I didn't really have time to rest because the day after that, I needed to start moving our house. And the day after that, we had movers come for like the big part of the move. And between that, just a, a lack of people's awareness or a lack of me asking for support. I ended up doing a very big portion of this move with myself and these two other guys on, on day one while having a, a hundred and some odd fever. Um, so I did what I know what to do, which is use willpower and strength and a lot of my fire process to kind of like get through this experience and it was fine. And then, you know, uh, for anybody who's, who's moved, I'm sure most of you guys have like, you know, it's a stressful, experience usually and at the end of the day your body hurts and all the rest of it so it's like I, my, my my bones hurt by the end of the move basically and uh yesterday you know the move's more or less over we're kind of like 95 percent moved in but yesterday i had a first opportunity in about two weeks to sit down and do some work and i got left in a situation with my my four-year-old where uh somebody was supposed to come over and, and help me out with him and they didn't they didn't arrive. And so I got left with uh, four hours trying to juggle my work schedule um, and uh, and my four year old. And and that was a, that was my break. That was my breaking point. It was like uh, all the lack of support, um, all the managing everything for everybody else, all the taking care of everybody else, not doing what I want, um, you know, just kind of boiled over to the surface. And I ended up having a conversation with somebody to kind of try to diffuse what was happening in my body and that ultimately just led to me getting very frustrated on my wife and uh, dumping on her and, and 
you know, truth be told, kind of blaming her for putting me in that situation. And I was just kind of over the entire week and over how hard I'd been working and all the rest of it. And so just to not have any time to myself felt really out of sorts. Um, and, you know, that put her into an emotional bind because she's hypersensitive. So I'm sharing all that because I wanted you to know that shit still happens in life, you know, like things that we don't expect out of control. That was a moment I was just feeling a lot of tension. And so I share that um, not just to share a story with you from my own personal life, but to also let you know in the past, uh, my defensive strategy, my family's defensive strategy, Elon's defensive strategy, uh, my whole life has been usually with anger, anger or some kind of domination or, you know, finger pointing towards somebody else or something like that. How many of you guys can, can relate to that? Just say I in the chat box. And in the past, thanks love. Um, and in the past, um, here's how I know what's changed a lot, you know, through the practices that we teach here, you know, no one can, uh, Hey brother, no one can, no one can dictate your circumstances. Even if you take Elon and mind programs, like the way that life gets easier for people, certainly circumstances can change, right? They can swing this way. They can swing that way. They can get harder. They can get easier. Um, that no one can control. Like life is going to do what life is going to do. You, you know, you or someone you love may get sick tomorrow. Uh, you or someone you love may get in an accident tomorrow, get hurt. You know, it doesn't matter how much personal spiritual development work you do. That's still going to happen or may, or could, or could happen. Right. Of course we don't want that to happen to you. Um, but ultimately what, qualitatively makes people's lives better is more about how they feel about it. What's their internal experience? And if you really track this, and if you do, you could say hi in the chat box. Most of us are spending a lot of time and or money trying to acquire things or experiences. And what we really care about is how that thing or that experience internally makes us feel. Now, most of the choices that we make in our lives, whether it's to buy something or to do something, are not dictated truly by our actual desires. They are dictated by patterns and strategies that we developed to defend ourselves from feeling overwhelmed and anxious. And so many people don't actually make choices in their life. They decide what to do based on how those parts in their systems feel and so in a weird way, you know, the matrix or the internal prison of our own minds and our bodies is very much dictated by the trauma that we experienced and the perceptions we had around that as children. And so pretty much everything that we do is guided by that. And so do you think that there's a, an opportunity for new things to arise in your life when what is sourcing all your decision making what is dissourcing your relationship with yourself and then ultimately sourcing your relationship with other people is literally dictated by all of that. There's very, very little new things that can happen because when the perception is the same, we take the same action, we show up the same way, and we often get the same results. But even if life circumstances are difficult, if we can arrive at that in a new perception, if we can arrive at that with a new way of being, you will find that oftentimes those circumstances start shifting and becoming rather new for you. And so what's new for me and has been for, you know, over the last few years, but definitely more intensely this last year, when I would be in situations like that in the past with, um, you know, my wife or something like that, I would uh, often feel this, <clears throat> I would often feel this like stickiness in my system because like anger has this uh, very like sticky energy to it. And it would keep me in that energy for a very long time. I mean, usually days at a time. I used to tell my wife, I don't mind getting angry. What I mind is that I get angry at myself for getting angry because of the way that it feels in my body. So mm -hmm. for the next three, four days, it would feel like this black tar was stuck on my system. It's draining my energy. I'm upset and I don't want connection, which I, of course I do want connection, but I don't know how to get it. I, there's no love and compassion towards myself. I'm unmotivated. So those, that to me, if for the two, three, four days that that might happen, actually felt like lost time. You know, like our time is our most precious resource that we have. And I'm like, I'm isolated all by myself. I'm angry and upset about everything. 
this feels like lost time. And I would get so upset about that because it could be like a small little infraction in my life, but in, to how it feels to my body is like someone just got murdered, you know? And, and it, it doesn't matter. And Elon, I'm sure can relate to, it doesn't matter how you rationalize it to yourself. It doesn't matter how many conversations you try to have with people to try, offload it. It's like, there's this feeling in your body and it is dictating your experience. And it's like, Ugh. And so the reason I know that transformation has occurred is because even in a situation like that with my wife yesterday that I just shared with you guys, generally speaking, that's how I would wake up the next morning, the next morning and the next morning, there would be this like feeling of like incompleteness and really all I would want, and you guys, you know, can say, raise your hand by saying I in the chat box is when you're upset, even with your partner, in a weird way, what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to reestablish connection because that's what you really want with your partner. I feel way more confident, way more clear and way better when I'm uh, connected with my wife. Bro, would you say the same thing? Is it true for you? What did we do? What did you do? I said, do you feel more confident when you're connected with your wife? Like more confident, clear, creative? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and just the stuff that's happening with Aaliyah right now is like just knocking my socks off of what's what's possible. Yeah. In so, so, so I'll let you share that in a second. But that's that's my point, right? Like we all want connection. We want connection. We want a healthy connection with ourselves. We want a healthy connection with my wife. So when when you're in those patterns to try to do work, when you're in pattern, it doesn't really work because you're literally in the pattern. It's like it's like a it's like you can't step back away from it. You can't get enough an objective view to even see what's going on. You're just so in it. And when you're so in it, it, it feels really real. Like my response yesterday felt totally justified very real. No one's there. Everyone's out to screw me. I'm working too hard. There's no support. Like you couldn't convince me in that moment that that was not the case, that that was the absolute perception. However, because I've done so many repetitions in terms of getting connection, in terms of finding compassion for myself, in terms of letting this aspect of myself be seen, because if you really want to grow compassion for the self, then you have to recognize that every time you're in pattern, Every time you're in pattern, there's shame and guilt and blame that shows up in your system and you turn away from yourself. You go, I need to stop this or I need to uh, not be this way anymore. And that does not dictate that you're compassionate towards this part. The way that we create compassion is that this part of you actually gets to be witnessed over and over and over and over and over again. Just like Elon was talking about his daughter there for a second, like for her to feel safe and connected with her dad, even when she's upset or angry, he needs to keep showing up and giving her space and, uh, and containment and love and connection and not take that away from her when she's, you know, upset about something because then when she learns is when I'm upset, I lose love. It, and then it makes it being upset, not safe. And then not safe means, well, I don't like this aspect of myself. I don't like this aspect of myself. I got to turn away from it or try to resolve it or figure it out. And, and here's the thing. Ain't nothing going away. I've done 20 years of work. I still experience anger and frustration. It's, it's totally natural. And there's absolute times where that energy and that response is completely appropriate for the situation that you're in. But to go back to kind of close loop this whole thing, the reason I know I've made tremendous headway is I can be in a situation now where that happens and I can still find compassion for the self. And when I can do that, that allows me to go and reestablish connection with my wife in a true and authentic way, which allows for every other aspect of myself that I, that I enjoy, my creativity, my confidence, my love, my heart to show up and be present for myself and in that relationship. And so you guys might be left with, well, how do you do that? And I'll let Elon share about his story too. And, and the, you know, how, the hows of that is what the programs are all about. But what I can tell you in short, and what I love maybe the most out of this work today, is that something Elon and I have recognized over the last 20 years is that healing work, to heal something, to transform something, is no different than when a child comes into this world. We've all heard the line, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Here's the truth. I don't know about you guys, I'm, I'm almost... This is my 40th year theory on this planet. Elon, Elon's popping in his 42nd over there. He's not, so 39 and 41 years old. And no matter how old I've gotten, there's a part of me that still recognizes that I'm still just a child. I'm a scared child. No yeah, no problem. Who's, who's like, doesn't know about all the things in the world and will never know all about all these things in the world. 
And I imagine no matter how old you get, there's still that, that feeling of this like child that's unsure. If you can relate, just say hi in the chat box so people can, can see that. Being an adult is an idea that we have about what it means to be in this world and show up in a specific way, specifically around responsibilities and stuff like that. But truth be told, the way your biology worked, your spirituality worked, your energy worked, nothing changed. Your nervous system works exactly the same way it worked when you were three years old as it does right now, right? Nothing changes. But we have this distinction, like the adult is no longer the child, so we throw away childish things and now you do the adult thing. But it's like, but the body works exactly the same way it's always worked. Since the moment you were you were in vitro, since the moment you were born, ain't nothing changed about how the system perceives, how the nervous system works, mm -hmm. how energy in the body flows. And so ultimately that's what you are. Regardless of what life has thrown you or what you have shaped your life into or it has shaped around you. And so it's important to recognize that if it took a village to raise a child, it continuously takes a village to raise the child. Even when you're 39 and 41 years old, you need a village around you because you have your head up your own ass, just like Elon and me. You cannot see the back of your head and you can't objectively look at your life in a way that other people can. And so when you're being a little shit in your life and we're all being little shits from time to time, how wonderful and useful it is to have people around you, a team of people who are trained to sit in compassionate, aware presence and let those aspects of yourself that you hid away and tucked away because you were told they were no good when you were a child, that, you know what, we can presence those now. We, those parts of you can get connection. They can get love. They don't have to hide away anymore. And when you practice this on a regular basis, it's why we build community into our programs, because we understood this aspect that you cannot heal yourself. You need the community around you to, to do that. Many indigenous cultures have been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, maybe some of you guys have heard there's like certain tribes in Africa that if someone steals or does something bad, instead of putting them in a prison or shaming them, they put them in a, what let's call it kind of like a love circle. They put the person in the, in the circle and everybody goes and takes turns and tells that person how much they love them and what they love about them to remind them of the qualities that they have inside, which is very different than how we do it in these cultures, in our cultures. So this is what's important is your inner, your inner experience of yourself and then that will parlay into an experience of others and i know elon has something you want to share about his daughter here so i'm gonna let him do that <clears throat> yeah i um you know when I, I was actually just on a level one call with with a few people and I, I shared a little bit about this as as well over there just because it's so present for me um in the world of it takes two to tango that guy's kind of like pointing to, I just want you to get like, it does not take two to tango. Mm -hmm. You can do the work internally and then have people in and around your life be completely different than when you left them just a few mere days ago. And it happens so quickly and it happens so, it, it, the shifts are so shocking and it basically comes from a place of <clears throat> we're, we're all made of energy. Every single one of us. All, all you are is a bunch of atoms put together in a, in a certain way, right? They are a, a conglomeration of atoms also put in a certain way. Now, when we are dealt with any sort of charge into our system that feels too much. And by too much, I mean too much of not feeling good enough, too much of sadness, too much of being disrespected, too much of uh, I'm all alone, too much of I'm betrayed, too much of I'm not listened to. Whatever that charge is in your system, if it's too much, it sends your nervous system into a fight, flight, or freeze response. Okay. And then we each have our own kind of like survival mechanisms that we go into as autopilot. Now, you don't even know that you're doing this because it is so habituated in the way that you operate that it just is. So typically, typically, I'm not saying this is like a hard, fast rule, but typically what happens is, you know, like we have a son and a daughter 
And typically what happens in families, as I see it, is one child is a lot more similar, not, I'm not saying looks wise, but a lot more similar pattern wise, like character style wise to one parent than they are to the other. And the one that is most similar to you is usually the one that gives you the most uh, challenge, if you will, right? Because it's like constantly seeing yourself in ways that you're not really used to seeing yourself. And so my daughter is that for me. And we are, uh, you know, to, to use the, the words from the five personality patterns, we both run the aggressive pattern. And what that looks like is that when she... Uh, gets dominant, meaning like she imposes her will, which I know plenty about. Um, what it feels like for me internally is that I'm not being respected. And so I'm like, oh, you think you can dominate me? And then what do I do? I go into like, no, 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 I'll show you, I'll dominate you. And so now I'm, I get bigger and I go, uh, it's called like power over. So I do that to her. And then does she back down? No, she does not back down. She gets bigger and she goes, oh yeah, I'll show you. And then I go, oh yeah, I'll show you. And we go into this battle and we're just like yelling crazy people, right? Um, <clears throat> none of which is the relationship that I want with my daughter. And I'm sure it's not the relationship that she wants with me either. And so I've been working on this and guy knows for years. I'm, I'm talking like years because she's been that way since... She was two years old, right? It's like, so I've been working on this for years. And uh, we recently came back from a, a module where we were actually working um, on this particular uh, pattern. And so I was doing work at the module and what I, I got to see was that, right? Like that struggle of like power over, power over, power over, power over. And the, the healing of that was this ability to actually like sit back and find what's called true power. So the other one is called like distorted power, right? And, and this would be like to find your true power. And in finding your true power, what it does is it almost sounds like a beacon, a signal, if you will, to the other system. So that when the other system is in their aggressive pattern, right? And their defense strategy, and this person, me in this case, can sit kind of more in the uh, true power, it actually gives like a, it shows the path for the other pattern. Like it shows the path for the other system to be like, oh, that's where my true power is. And then you're in essence, like giving them a, uh, a simpler way to get there. And so I was doing this work during the weekend and Aliyah was very top of mind for me. And I came home and ended up getting COVID, uh, while traveling. And so I basically was quarantining in this room all last week. And typically what happens is I come home, my daughter really misses me. We, we share this beautiful hug. We, we have like a little bit of cuddle time. And then she, you know, we kind of go back to our, our own ways. But this time she didn't have the physical connection from me because I was obviously uh, dealing with COVID. And so what was interesting is she stayed in that like cute girl, I miss you Abba mode for the entire week. Like she was making me tea every day when I wanted it. And she was making me scones and cookies and like bringing my food and she was being super, super cute. And so I sat here and I had this, I just shared with her what I'd noticed. We ended up sitting and she was like sitting right outside the door cause she couldn't obviously be with me. Um, and we ended up sitting together for like an hour and a half. It was either Wednesday or Thursday. And <clears throat> my daughter, I was saying this in the group, my, my daughter, she calls me Abba, which is a Hebrew for dad. And her, her famous line is every time I try to share something from, you know, spirituality or energy or whatever with her, this is what she says to me. She says, don't walk me into that talk, Abba. Hmm. Like, so th it, there hasn't even really been an opening, right, to, to share or have these conversations. So you can imi imagine my absolute bewilderment when I end up sitting here and we end up having this conversation for an hour and a half. And what came out of it is that every Monday and every Thursday going forward, we, her and I are going to sit and have these kind of conversations. So we started reading yesterday, five personality patterns, the aggressive pattern, me and my daughter. And then we would like do exercises and share and all these things. 
all of which I had never been able to even like get through to her. Right now, I didn't try to push. I didn't try to like put something down, like push something down her throat or convince her or coerce her or any of that. I just knew like, I'm just going to keep doing my work. And in doing my work, something on, on, like something unfurled or released or opened on my heart, which sends a signal to her atoms, right? Mm -hmm. My atoms shifted. It sends a signal to her atoms. And without even me having to say something to her, the shift is already being created. And so you can be that person in your life where you can walk into a room and not say a single word, but by the virtue of the work that you have done on yourself, the room will never be the same. The people in that room will never be the same. And they will shock and surprise you because it'll be like interacting with someone so, so different. And I know that most of us, that's not the way we operate. We operate like we need to have this completion conversation with them. And we operate like we need to share with them, you know, I've made up this story about you. And, and th th this story has impacted our relationships. And I realized that I made up the story when I was a kid, but it's not really you. So I, da, 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 and I'm going to give it up. Right. Like, and all that stuff is great. And yes, it works to an extent. But the truth is that these relationships are here for us to actually play out certain healings for our soul. And if you can use the relationship and what that person is or is not doing to you in a way where you can actually go inwards and go, oh, that's triggering that aspect of me. And you learn to be able to sit with that part. And you get liberation and healing from that part. Now that person, this testing relationship has to shift because they no longer have to show you that anymore. Like you've, you've worked through that. You've healed that layer, right? They'll probably show you something else, but like you, you you don't have to do that anymore. And that's honestly what's happened with my daughter. I'm like, I'm flabbergasted. We sat here yesterday and we did we spoke and we shared and we did exercises on how to find the, the, the parts inside of us and how to create uh, stability and how to find ground. She started journaling about her experiences so she can get more interested in like what, what comes up. So we have things to like talk about and, and explore as we're, I'm like, this is unimaginable to me. And it's everything that I've ever wanted. It was just like, I had no idea how to go and get it. And all it was is sit and do your inner work and let them come to you. So wherever it is and however stuck you might feel in whatever relationship you feel stuck in, I'm like here to shout from the rooftops and gives you, give you hope. None of that is permanent. None of it. I don't care. It could have been 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, 50 years. None of it is permanent. I've seen the most miraculous shifts happen inside of mom, dad, son, mom, relationship, whatever it might be like. So beautiful and so magical. And it's going to take some work on your behalf. Yeah, it's beautiful. You just, you really never know. I mean, uh, just out of curiosity, is it something that she has a desire to work on too? Like that she, the, it impacts her life, I imagine as well. Yeah. I mean, day one, like we were sitting and um, I told her that, you know, I'm, my hands activated and like, I can actually like stream fire from my hands and <laughs> she has the same, she has the same pattern. So she, she knows how to do all that stuff already she just doesn't really have language for it so she's like well can you send it to me we were you know the totally far uh like she's out in the hallway i was like sure i was like close your eyes and so i started streaming and she's like i was like well where do you feel it where do you feel heat and she's like <laughs> she's so clever she goes no i'm not going to tell you you she goes, no i'm not going to tell you you tell me where you're sending it first and then i'll i'll let you know if it's working so we kind of go back and forth, back and forth a little bit. And, you know, she felt it on my, on her heart. And then she like felt it move down into her stomach and into her legs and all this stuff. And then at the end of it, she's like, 
can I send it now to you? And I was like, sure. So I lay down and she sends it back to me and right. Like, so she's getting, I'm giving her feedback and she got so, so excited by it. And we have just been sitting with like, we both get triggered in the same way, right? Where it's like that, that collapse in the solar plexus that like, mm, and then just that rage and anger that builds so fast in the system and then just comes out. And so we're just practicing to like slow down and to notice those things. And she's an amazing teacher for me, right? Cause she comes and she brings so much of that fire. So for me, it's also to learn to like, just keep resting back and just allow her to be experienced and be felt and be seen while going through that. Where instead of like having to try to shut it down or, or make it any other way, which historically has been very, very challenging for me. Right. Yeah. It just triggers all the aspects of me. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just been mind bending. I, I don't even know how else to describe it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So how many of you guys listening know that when you're trying to improve your relationship with yourself, what you're really trying to do is, is overcome aspects of yourself. Just say, I am the chat box. <clears throat> you're trying to undo something or upgrade something or whatever it might be. But generally speaking, people usually treat personal development as trying to get rid of something. Like they don't like some aspects so they're like, hey, if, if only I can get rid of this, everything would be great. And Caroline's saying me. And so, yeah, I just want you to feel into that. Um, those of you guys who are saying I, and I, I imagine you're representative of the whole too, because I, I certainly get caught in those traps as well. It's just like feel into what that feels like because I'll, I'll reframe it in a little bit of a different way. You're basically saying you're trying to disown a part of you that already exists. Just feel what it feels like internally. Like if you can if you can locate discomfort in the body, like for some of you guys, it's at your solar plexus or your heart is closing as you th think about disowning a part of yourself. What does that feel like to disown a part of you? Do you feel open and expansive or are you feeling more contracted in your system if you can track that? And so I imagine what you're feeling is contraction or like a like an internal discomfort of some kind. It could be like a, a tension or a, a closing or a numbness. Yeah, Caroline's saying a tightening in her system. That's exactly what I'm talking to. So look, if we're going to say the language of the body is energy, right? If the language of the mind is language as we know it, uh, but the language of the body is is these sensations that we experience in our body, then if we're going to say that what I'm experiencing in my system is tightening, are you getting good? Are you getting negative feedback or positive feedback from your body? In contrast, right? Like when you're in love or in a loving experience, you feel open, very expansive, much more positive type of experience in the body that tells you, oh, let me investigate this more and pull myself towards this, right? And so the, the body has its own language. And I want you guys to get that when we approach our developmental work in that way to try to get rid of something, disown it, this is what the body is experiencing. The body's not like, oh, let me open and, and move energy. It's like, let me tighten and hunker down. I don't like what's happening right now. And what happens if you track a little bit more is, so there's an experience you don't like. You have a judgmental judgment about it and you try to approach it through, well, I don't like this. Let's get rid of it. And then the system actually tightens up even more. And so you get even more bound up in the pattern. And now there's confusion because here you are trying to do something that ultimately is making it worse. And then maybe you'll fall back on whatever defensive strategy that you have. Could be anger, could be getting shut down, could be resigned or apathetic, could be blaming, could be alcohol could be tv you know like checking out you know all those kind of things and i want you guys to get that all those things no matter what your strategy is not good not bad it's just you ultimately trying to deal with discomfort in your system and and the other thing to rec recognize is none of it works literally none of it works now in the same token here like using me as your avatar whatever it is that you're feeling in your body i'm just gonna be here for a moment for like a minute and just run an experiment with yourself. I want you to just see if you can locate this part in your body, like wherever this tightening is that Caroline is pointing to for you it might feel like a, if you even feel like a sharp pain inside the system. But generally speaking, if you're, there's a place to look with your awareness, it's at your throat. 
top or bottom, it might be closing at the heart, it might feel like tight or closing solar plexus, which is that area between the stomach and the heart here and the stomach itself. And I want you to allow yourself to just, instead of having to fix anything, just with open curiosity, just go to that place and just hold awareness of this part of your body. And as you do that, if you can check me out, like actually like check me out on the screen, I'll actually I'll put myself big on the screen so you can see me. <clears throat> I'm just gonna offer you presence here for about a minute through my own awareness. And somehow, some way, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Again, we're just, just find some connection. So if you wanna look at my eyes, Elon can do the same from his energetic body. And I just want you to uh, do the best that you can to permission the experience that you're having. And that's at the level of mind. If there's chatter, great, there's chatter. If there's discomfort, no, loosely noticing discomfort, not really being attached to any specific thing, just actually allowing yourself to be with the experience that you're having, not trying to change anything, not trying to fix anything, just allowing yourself to have the experience that you're having. That's it. And if that part of you can notice, you're not alone this time. Usually you're alone when this happens, you go internal or you disassociate out and notice right now you're actually with somebody getting presence. Now look, some things move very quickly, some things take their time and that is completely determined by your own system's intelligence. But I just want you to notice what happens when we stop disowning this part and we start tuning into it. So some of you guys are actually disassociating. It's getting like foggy up in your brain. Kind of feels like you're leaving a little bit. That's fine. Some of you guys retreat inside. Whatever it is that's happening is happening and it cannot happen any other way. And your body has its own intelligence and it knows how to move things for you if you just stop interacting with them and get out of the way. This is a, an invitation to be with your experience rather than trying to have a different experience. This is your experience, this here right now, right in front of you. So in the chat box, if some of you just want to kind of report, what are you noticing as we allow for the experience to be here versus trying to change the experience that's here? You know, I'll just say this. Yeah, some people, somebody said my heart expands. At the end of the day, we're looking for kind of a more of a diffusing, like the body is getting into a more relaxed state because nothing really happens until we're in a relaxed state. We want to ground the system. And we want to resource ourselves through energetic awareness and connection. Yep. Somebody said my heart gets warm. That was Tana. Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. Until we are able to regulate our nervous system, okay, until we're able to ground our system and get resource in our body, there is no healing or transformation that can take place. And say that again, until your system is grounded, regulated, resourced, there is no healing that can take place, no transformation that can take place. Anything other than that state is you in a pattern. Yeah, Vera says that it's, it's easing. And when you notice, we did that for about a minute. I'm on the other side of the world, potentially from you. We have no physical connection of any kind. But something magical happens when you intentionally sit in connection with another person and you just offer them your loving, unconditional presence and awareness. That part of them can be seen. When a part gets seen, it's just like a child who gets seen by their parent. It, the nervous system can relax, ah, I have connection, it's safe. These are the, the energetic signals we're sending to each other through the field that every mammal sends on planet Earth. And this elicits a response in your body and what your body does when it's grounded, relaxed, and resources, is it begins to metabolize energy very rapidly, by the way. So, you know, in, in Buddhist terms, it's uh, samsaras that are clearing. 
And so as that begins to clear, what happens is, is that whatever showed up to defend that sensitive child, it's like the bouncer at the club, the threat response in the body goes down. And so the mind doesn't have to interact with it. It can, oh, okay, threat response is going down. We can go back to a placid state. And so many of us are trying to reprogram our mind all the time. And I think there's there's value in, in learning about the mind. We teach it at level one. That's what we focus on is more of the mindset stuff, paradigm changes, responsibility, integrity, how to manifest properly, how to uh, repair relationships, how to use nonviolent communication. So for those of you guys who want to learn those skills, they're fundamental, they're foundational, and will change your life. And if you want to do that, right above my head, you'll see a link over there, m.me forward slash Satori Prime, you click on that, you type in the word change, and our team will uh, send you information about how you can do that, okay? But beyond that is starting to understand that what the mind is responding to is this threat response that's occurring in the body. And so we wanna learn how to arrest the body, downregulate our nervous system, metabolize this energy, and here's the beauty, when you do that repetitiously, just like every strategy and pattern and personality trait that you have, these are just, things that you've done a lot of reps with over and over again to recondition ourselves is to just create new pathways, new neurology. And the way that we do that is through consistent repetition, but there's repetition that most of us are doing, which is an isolation by ourselves. And while we're in trauma, like a trauma, a trauma, a traumatic response. And then there is doing repetitions where you come out of the trauma response and you actually sit and you get connection with another human being who knows how to hold presence. And you'll see your body just starts its own intelligence, divine intelligence starts clearing it out. And before you know it, that psychology that you once had is completely changed itself. We say awareness teaches itself. Your own awareness is the most intelligent, oops, is the most intelligent guru and teacher that you have. Most of us give away our power to an authority figure. And to some extent in the beginning that, that may be important, but ultimately you always want to take back your power and recognize that the number one fundamental best teacher you have on planet earth is yourself. But most of us are trying to teach ourselves through our parts that are, that are experiencing trauma. And until we come out of that, we don't know how to access our own awareness to use the intelligence of our body and of our soul to dictate and teach our ourselves how to go into our enlightenment and into our self-realization, which is ultimately what Elon and I want to guide you to is to recognizing that you are your own guide and here are the practices that you can start doing every single day with yourself and others to elicit this incredibly intelligent design from your body. Because that's what evolution has done, our spiritual evolution, our biological evolution. It has given us everything that we've ever needed to survive and thrive and all these things. But most of us have no fucking idea how to put ourselves into a container, into an environment that allows for the body to do what it actually wants to do, which is self-repair and heal. You never break a bone. You never cut your finger where your body goes, eh, not this time. You take care of it. It always does something, doesn't it? It always repairs it and heals it. Now, of course, if your body's completely out of alignment, you can, you can mend a bone that's been broken, but it might mend itself in a way that you don't want it to. And so when we go to a doctor and they set the bone and they put it in the cast, the doctor is creating an environment. So that when the bone heals back, it can heal back in alignment to how that part of you is supposed to function. And that's really all being a teacher and educator and a coach really is, is we are the people helping you set and create an environment so that when your body heals, it does it in alignment. But the healing happens from your body, not because of what Elon and I are doing or anything else. And the practices that we've learned for, for the last 20 years, many of them are very ancient and have been around for many, many thousands of years and are proven to work. And if you decide to take this journey, just know that a lot of things in your life can change very quickly. And then, you know, but healing ultimately is a very, is a patient process because it's a process of mastery of the self. And most of us have very shitty programming. We were taught the complete opposite way of how it works. Elon and my, Elon and me included and that word that's because it's, it's societal how these things have, have transpired. And so it's going to take something certainly in the beginning even some frustration, even grappling with things that you're not accustomed to doing, especially like reaching out for support and, you know, being with other people and uh, just grappling with distinctions and work in a way that is really unfamiliar to most of us. But if you're willing to do that, especially as we go into the new year and a lot of people want to make a lot of changes, 
you guys get to recognize that there's no savior coming. In order for a transformation to occur in your life, you got to do something. What is that, Elon? You call it Goya, right? It's the yep. law of Goya. The law of Goya is get off your ass. Nothing, nothing in mine in Elon's life has transformed without us saying, yes, I want to do that thing. And for 20 years straight, without exception, without uh, any sort of breaks at all, Elon and I are always in an environment with other teachers, with other students, and new classes. And the reason for that is because at the end of the day, the thing that we value most is our interpersonal experience. And so we recognize we're not going to change the interpersonal experience by buying a Ferrari, although that could be nice, or like getting the big house, although that could be nice too. But like the way you feel about the world is, is dictated by your in, the internal awareness that you have. Everything, 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 everything in life gets easier when your relationship to the inner world experience changes. And we are living through a major time of upheaval in our lives. And if you realize society has been very externally focused for a very long time, We've tried everything this way. It doesn't work. People don't find joy, don't find happiness, don't find fulfillment, don't find authentic connection, even if they're, quote unquote, very successful on the surface. And we're now learning that, hey, you know what? This experience that I'm having is really has to do with my internal. And if I want my external to look different, if I want my circumstances to show up, if I want my perceptions to change, if I want my money, my health, my relationships, all that to improve, then what's got to shift first is I got to get this. I got to get the system in alignment. I got to put it into an environment that allows for it to regularly, energetically clean itself, right? And just the way you wash the outside of your body, you got to learn how to wash the inside of your body. We call that energetic hygiene. And if you don't know those things, you are going to walk around with a lot of dirt and grime in the system. It's like you haven't changed your oil since the day you were born. How is that engine going to run? It's going to be sludgy and break down and it's going to work. It's going to work way harder than it needs to, to get there. So the, if you're wondering how we do all that, that's what the classes are for, right? That's why we intensely focus on certain aspects to help you guys set a foundation, how the mind works and how awareness and energetic, and energetic works, and then ultimately how to be with life as it's unfolding in a really powerful and transformative way. And then if your life path ultimately could be somebody who wants to serve and be a coach, we can help you get on that path as well as you become more masterful at the work that we're doing in here as well. And so that, those are the paths that you can take with us. We highly recommend starting with our level one work and doing the mindset development stuff. We also introduce you to some of the energy and awareness. You get a free ticket to our uh, live events that Elon and I do as well and some other incredible bonuses. If you want to find out all that information, again, click on that link above, m.me forward slash Satori Prime. Type the word change in there. And then someone from our team will send you all the information. And you will get to talk to somebody if you have any questions, like an actual human being who's doing this work and who's dedicated to making a difference in other people's lives. And we honor your choice, whatever it's going to be, whether it's, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't. Or, hey, I have more questions, you know, and I want to let you know that we, our team's job is to talk to you about stuff that's extremely vulnerable and to also challenge you. Because when you're faced usually with a choice to transform your life in some way, shape or form, for many people, what immediately comes up is resistance. Why? Because the parts are the parts. They know life this way. They know how to create challenges. They know how to do the things that they know how to do. When we're usually facing the unknown and we're looking at doing something that can change our, our view, what naturally arises is a small is a, about a bit of resistance. And then people talk about money or time or whatever it is, but you gotta, gotta, get, gotta get, if you're here, chances are it's because you wanna transform your life. If you're listening to me and Elon talk, as chances are you want to transform your life. It is going to take Goya getting off your ass and doing something and intervening, whether it's with us or somebody else, whatever feels good in alignment for you. You should always work with people that you feel good and you trust. It's going to take something on your part to recondition how you operate in this world. It's not going to happen on its own. Winning the lottery is not coming. You're not going to instantaneously get famous because you saw some person do it. Could it happen? Maybe, but that's a 0.0000000001% chance. Do you want to rely on the 0.0000001% chance things that happen in this world that change people's lives? We think it's happening to everyone because they put it on the internet and in the media, but that's not your average person's life. Right? There's nobody in my life that spontaneously became famous. There's nobody in my life that spontaneously has won the lottery. 
do these things happen? They do, but it, they're they're called one in a billion for a reason. There's only eight billion people on the planet. That means eight eight people this year will experience that out of eight billion people. So it's a, a lot to rely on to hope that things are going to work out. I promise you guys this. Being a yes to this work, you are absolutely going to experience things that you have never experienced before. You're going to transform your way, your life, and your relationships, and your health, and your money conversations and in ways that you can absolutely, absolutely not predict. And that will be way more enjoyable than winning the lottery or hoping that it works out. Because you will know for a fact that you sourced it that you created it, that you manifested it, and you really are that powerful. And so I'm, I want to give you a little kick in the butt. And I also want to let you know that it's our team's job to give you a little bit of kick in the butt because we know when you get to that point of choice, there's going to be a resistance that shows up. And you're going to need somebody else's confidence in this work to say, you should go do that thing. It's going to absolutely help you. And I promise you this work will. So I really want to invite those of you guys who are wanting to step into something in the new year, like commit to something now and already put that in your future so that you're not one day, someday, hoping that it works out. You're actually putting something into action that's going to make that happen for you. That's going to help you give, you give you the tools and experiences that you need to make that happen. Okay. Love y'all. Anything else you want to throw in there, bro? Last minute? Nope. Okay, guys. So again, if you want to uh, talk to the team, again, you can go to our messenger m.me forward slash satori prime type in the worst change they will send you all the details about how this all works and then you can let us know if you're in you're out or if you have any more questions okay we love y'all we'll see you next time thanks for being here bye everybody